good afternoon, and allow me to introduce myself. My name is Martin Mader, as, as was said, and I'm going to have an habilitation presentation on the topic of point cloud processing in industrial applications. During the presentation, um, actual problems from the industry and the state of their approaches, how, how to solve the problems, will be shown, and I will try to show um, results from, from our ongoing collaboration with the industry. Some of the research done was, a, was done as a joint research between Communist University, where I work as an assistant professor, as Calotex Research, my company, when I work as an um, as a executive officer and research lead. And we, we do research with processing of data captured by 3D scanners and cameras. We have a long-term collaboration with a company called Photonio, we're manufacturing 3D scanners and cameras, and they're providing a full-stack industrial applications for automatizations. And I will, therefore, I want to sh show a results from our mutual collaboration during this presentation. So I will start with an introduction and a quick, quick overview of research area I'm working on, and I will show some examples of industrial application. Mainly, we will show two groups of applications, vision guided robotics and object inspections. And I will try to compare analytical methods with data-driven approaches. And finally, I, I will show hybrid methodology and describe some ideas for future research. So I will already introduce by the committee. However, I would like to like to do one quick, one slide introduction in order to sort all the things in one timeline. So basically, currently, I'm an assistant professor at the Communist University. Thank you. I'm working on research topics with students, supervising theses, lecturing some courses, and I'm also running a research and development company. And eight years have passed since I finished my PhD. After my PhD, I directly started to work at the Communist University, firstly as a research assistant. In parallel, I've been working as a freelancer, and I've applied for a Society postdoc to project to TUV. And when I, when I finished the postdoc project, I returned from the Vienna, and together with my students, we co-founded a, a company, Scalatex Research. Since 2018, I started to lecture as an assistant professor, first at the Technical University and later at Communist University. And in 2020, I started to focus my research on the areas of machine learning, and neural network processing of 3D vision data. So since PhD times, I've, I've been working on different research topics. I've moved from mesh processing to skeleton extraction to motion capture systems. And within motion capture, I'm working with 2D cameras, 3D cameras. Later, I'm processing the 3D camera data and performing the 3D reconstruction. And lately, I've moved towards machine learning-based data processing. And all these, all these 3D scan processing methods, the data-driven methods and the synthetic data rendering, I will try to describe in the context of industrial applications. So we will go to industrial applications with the focus given on the robotics and automatization processes. The first group of these Problems can be called vision-guided robotics. The cameras are used as robot eyes, and the camera data are used to guide the robot based on the visual information processed by, by some computational algorithms. For instance, pose estimation of an object, object picking, and handling the object through the environment is a showcase of such a problem. The second group can be labeled as object inspection. For example, the meteorology or the measurement of the, of the objects or quality control or, or decision making if some manufactured part fulfills the, the set criteria. For previously mentioned problems, the goal is to perform an accurate measurement at high speed and ideally without stopping the bell to save the cycle time and to optimize the whole process. And 3D vision, 3D vision gives us more relevant information because of the depth information. The 3D computer vision describes methods for captioning processing samples with 3D coordinates. And the data 
captured by, by 3D scans and cameras are called ordered or structured point clouds. And basically, they are samples with 3D coordinates. The coordinates are defined in, in camera space. That is basically, a, in this case, a right-handed Cartesian coordinate basis. And the point cloud is structured because it is stored in a matrix, like classical to the image. Just the samples are associated with, with 3D coordinates. And there are two main principles for, for 3D vision, how to get the information using the sensor. The first way is the measuring of time. And like the time it takes for a particle or a wave to travel from a, from a source to the, to the object and back to the, to, to the sensor. And the second way is triangulation. Mm, the cameras are first calibrated, and then mm, using the epipolar geometry, the coordinates of the 3D point can be calculated from the intersection of the projection lines. So there have been several 3D, 3D cameras developed and, and available on the market, varying in, in price, frame rate, precision of the captured data. The time of flight cameras and leader work in, sim in similar way in, in the way of measuring the time. And the triangulation principles are used in the case of photogrammetry, profile laser scanners, or structured light systems. If we compare the time of flight and structured light, we can see that the, the, the time of flight camera produces more noisy data with lower precision. And the frame rate of the cameras can be quite high and price very affordable for a 3D camera. Uh, stereo vision, in the, in the case of two cameras, or photogrammetry, in the case of multiple cameras, can produce more precise results based on the triangulation if the matching feature points are well extracted. In the case of multi-view data, the photogrammetry algorithm minimizes the sum of squared errors over all the views, and the algorithm is called bundle adjustment. The idea of structured light cameras is that one of the cameras from the stereovision principle can be substituted with the projector projecting patterns, encoding the, the angle information. And majority of structured cameras work on the projection patterns coding the horizontal or vertical angle coordinates. And the second, the second coordinate is set implicitly from the camera baseline and the calibration because the camera and the projector, they lie on, they are on one line. So basically, the, the 3D coordinate based on the triangulation can be directly computed on per pixel basis from the, the projected pattern uh, captured by the camera. The precision of structured light scanners can be, can be higher and the resulting point cloud is less noisy. However, the process can be quite slow. The bottleneck of the structured light process is that if the full sensor space is projected with binary pat patterns encoding the coordinates, the process can be quite slow because we, we have to use like, quite a lot of these patterns. And the gray code is usually used to minimize the coding error. In all these mentioned applications before, the goal is to scan objects in motion with, with high precision. And we don't want to do stop and go for any processing like this in, during the task like localization, picking, or inspection. And the goal in the industry is to perform the processing, the processing task in real time over moving parts. And this is a hard problem to do this with the standard hardware. And as I mentioned in the introduction, I, in the beginning, I've been working on different research topics, but I started to work in the industry field at a time when a prototype of structured light camera was created by, by a photon in the end of 2017. And the principle of this, of this parallel structured light is that the projection, projection is performed using a single laser swipe, and the multiple code patterns are simulated on the sensor in, in parallel by, by activation and, and deactivation of the, of the pixels on the sensor. So basically, the simulation of the pattern projection is performed in the sensor space of the camera in parallel. 
And uses, using this parallel activation, deactivation, a real-time capture performance can be achieved using structured light technology. Mm. Similar to standard image processing, in, in point cloud processing, the task can be also categorized into two groups. Some low-level processing tasks where some local operators are applied can be such as can be applied, or a high-level processing task when the global information of the scene is gathered and processed in order to get some, some understanding and semantics of the captured scene, the objects there and their, their mutual relationship. And such an information can, can lead into robust segmentation like pose estimation, object detection, or classification. And the program processing can, can be cut into two groups based on the type of algorithm used to solve the problem. The programmer can either use an analytical method to compute the results in an exact way, like to detect feature points, feed lines, edges, and compute some precise transformation. There, there's usually a, several parameters like, like thresholds that need to be explored and set by the programmer. Or the programmer can use a data-driven machine learning model to statistically approximate the, the result on a, based on the scene training data. And there's much more parameters to set, and basically this, these parameters can, can be set manually, and there are, there are, there are set automatically uh, during, the, during the training process. Let's conclude the overview of industrial application 3D vision and move into the group of application called vision-guided robotics. So by, by vision-guided robotics, we understand algorithms where robot movement is determined based on visual information from the cameras and computer vision algorithms and robotic algorithms. The problems here are like localization, segmentation, 60 pole estimation, gripper picking, and optimization of the, of the kinematics of the robot. And for the localization, first the, the spaces need to be cal calibrated and registered. For this, a marker board or a ball object can be used. The calibration between, between, the, camera, between the camera and, and a table or, ca or table space so the, yes, the marker work can be used here, and for the calibration of camera space and the robot space, the double object can be used. The double, on, double object is, is held by the, by the gripper in the robotic arm, and knowing the, all the transformation in the robotic arm, and knowing the, the position of the ball, we can calculate the tra transformation between the camera space and the base of the robot. And after this calibration process, the segmentation, process estimation, beam picking can be performed. So having the registered spaces, a 60 pole estimation in the camera space is calculated. And we need to have defined picking points on the parts. And now the segmentation can be performed and the, the pose estimation of the objects. So I've described some vision guided robotics problems. And now I would like to dive more into, into two problems I've been working on during during last three years. And these two problems are segmentation and six deposit estimation. So these two problems are part of also our part of our research and publications. And these are uh, showcase of Research problems that can be directly used in this kind of industry. So in, in this first, first part, I will compare analytical and data-driven approach for segmentation of point clouds. So the, seg the, the analytical method for point cloud segmentation was published in this paper, and we also implemented an optimized version that, that runs on a GPU and embed the GPU di directly on the, on the device, on the 3D scanner and camera. And the main motivation for this was to have fast segmentation algorithm, because the segmentation algorithm is usually the first step in the whole post-processing pipeline. So we would like to perform the segmentation in real time. That means under 
20 milliseconds per, per frame. And this fast performance can be, can be achieved by storing the structured point cloud, point cloud, point cloud in the grid. So basically, the, the, the neighborhood is defined implicitly in the grid. And the second important attribute is to have a segmentation not producing bridges. That means, first, first, first step of the algorithm is the computation of the, of the metrics. So basically, based on the, on the geometrical information in the image, like position of points and, and normals, we would like to construct the, the boundaries between these geometrical regions. That should, and how to do this is to compute the, the changes, the local, local changes in curvature and local changes in depth, and to compare these local changes against set thresholds. And if we threshold these, these values, we can get a binary mask, that is its threshold is matrix, that it can be filled in, in a quick parallel way. Basically, the, 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 the fastest filling algorithm for this is, is called correlated component labeling. And if we tested it, it, it ran around 45, it means around 45 milliseconds to, to fill one three megapixel point cloud. And the problem is that if there are some, some discontinuities in the, in the matrix like this, there are some white spots, the classical, classical filling produces uh, an under-segmentation. So basically, some regions are merged into one group region. And we would like to have a bridge segmentation that can s somehow, somehow split the bridges between, between these regions. So here, here Christian can see an example of these, of these bridges in the matrix. And using the classical, classical feeling such a one segment is created. And we would like to, we would like to have this bridge split like this. So basically, we've developed a novel hierarchical seats spawning and line feeling to prevent this, this joining. And moreover, the parallel GPU, GPU implementation of this, of this approach of ours can be even, even faster than the, the fastest GPU implementation of this connected component labeling. The idea is that, inspired by mid-map creation in the context of texture mapping, a pyramid of different levels of metrics is created in a bottom-up manner. And after the pyramid is created, uh, the, the, the metrics in different level is, is processed, and the C transfer and spawning and filling is performed in a bottom-up way. And this results in the final segmentation on the on the on the lowest level with the highest resolution. And the last step of this pyramid filling is removal of the matrix because we don't want the boundaries there. So we just continue in the filling of the seas with the boundary elements. Using such a analog algorithm, we can get a relatively good segmentation approximation that can be used in, in further 3D pipelines. However, the semantic information and current segmentation is missing there. You can see that this part is like over-segmented, and there are some other problems. However, the results are good for, as an approximation for some other, other applications. And the, the algorithm is really, really fast. Another way how to do this is to compute the segmentation in data-driven way. Mm, for this, we can have like a lot of uh, scans that are manually annotated, or we can, we can render a synthetic training data set. Mm. We've been experimented with such a, such a data-driven approach with synthetic training data, and when applied on, on a synthetic data with the same properties, the results look good. However, on a real data from, from real real scanner, um, There are some problems. The, the segmentation fails. It misjudges the bin edges with the segments of the parts. The problem is the difference between the synthetic and real data. There is some, 
there is some more noise and some artifacts that, that, are, that are not presented in the synthetic data. I will sum this up more in, in details in the end of the presentation. In the second part, let's move to the problem of 6D pose estimation. Again, we can, we can compare the analytical approach with data-driven approach. So the next vision guided robotics problem I would like to show here is the, is the localization. Basically, it's a 6D pose estimation in computer vision, and the results can be directly used for beam picking or the kinematics optimization. So we implemented and compared the analytical method and the data driven method in, the, in this paper. So first, let's talk about the analytical approach for beam pose estimation. If all the edges and corners of the bin are visible and the top layer of the bin is composed of the closest points to, 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 the, to, to the camera, so if the, all these properties are optimal, we can, we can perform the, the menu or analytical solution. So first, first the scan lines are generated in, in horizontal or, and vertical And maximas in the derivatives are, are extracted. And having these maximas, we can extract the segments lying on the top layer of the bin. And having the segments, we can feed their plane, and this gives us an, a normal direction of the bin. Next, we got also the, the normal information in the point cloud. So we can find like corner points based on the change in the orientation between the neighboring points. And having the corners, we can fit the edges of the bin and find the, the bin basis that can be directly used to, to, to compute the orientation of the bin. The computed transformation is precise, works well on good data captured by the scanner, where the whole bin is visible and the data are good. However, the method fails if some of four corners is missing, or some edges are missing, or, or if there, there, are some, there is some noise or unknown object in the scene. And you can see that the real edges are these red ones. Mm. Yeah, this might happen when the, when the bin is like out of the scanning volume of the scanner, or if the material is highly reflective and therefore the bin walls cannot be captured by the, by the scanner. Okay, and now let's move to the data-driven method for 6D pose estimation and compare the approaches. So, more robust way how to do this is the data-driven approach, and we can use some synthetically generated training data or manually annotated training data. These are our tool for, for data, data annotation. We can, we can pick some corner points and tops points lying on the bottom of the bin, and the transformation can be computed. And having the training data, a neural, neural network can be trained. Here's an example of si simple ResNet architecture with three heads, when one branch is used for the regression of translation, and two branches are used for, for regression of, of principal vectors describing the basis of the bin. These two vectors can, can be used using Gaussian orthogonal orthogonalization to, to compute the ortho, orthogonal basis of the bin, and this can be directly used to, to calculate the, the rotation, the rotation matrix. The method trained on the synthetic data gives very good results. It's, it is robust to noise. However, however, for real data, the, the precision is a little bit lower because it's only an approximation. However, if the guess is relatively good, we can use some, some analytical post-processing. For example, ICP method. ICP stands for iterative closest point, and having two input surfaces or, or sampled surfaces in, in point set, mm, we can calculate the transformation by minimizing the distance in b between between two pairs of samples. In the case of projection-based ICP, 
the samples are calculated using projections. And the samples can be taken in a uniform way or a normal sample can be used, where the geometric details are changing like, more frequently, the, the more samples taken, taken in these areas. And so formally for a given point X, we set and we take a project it sets at P and we find the transformation by, by minimizing such a sum of, of sum of squared of Euclidean distances and well, this results in the, in the optimal, optimal rotation and translation. However, the, the original surface of uh, the, the scan surface is discretized. Therefore, the ideal pairs by the projection can, cannot be found in general. And therefore, we, we, do the, we perform the projection into the local tangent plane around, around each each point. So first, the robust approximation of the transformation is inferred using the neural network. And in the next step, the ICP is used to, to get a pre more precise result. Here you can see the, the original scan colored by blue. The green, is the, the green is the neural network inference. And the red one is the hybrid approach that, that fits well the point cloud. The next topic is the reconstruction of 3D objects. This can be used to, to, to quality control measurements or creation of virtual models. So basically, the, the, the object stands on a, on a rotary, rotary table, and a, a set of scans is captured by the cameras. The scans are aligned, and next the filter. The filtration can be performed in a statistical way because we, we get a multi-view data, so we can we can find like what what point is the noise and what is the real point. And finally, after the filtration, the mesh surface reconstruction is applied. We use screen 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 Poisson surface reconstruction, what is a state-of-the-art approach for triangulation. So here here is our our pipeline. It is called point cloud rigid. Alignment and fusion of the scan or prefos. And these are the, the three, three steps in the pipeline. By registration of these multi view data, point cloud data, the precision of the reconstruction can, can, can go, can be pushed like, towards the scanner limits or beyond the, the scanner limits because we are having like, more samples than, than samples in the original scan. And, and this results into a super resolution approach. Here you can see the reconstruction pipeline using our, our software solution. Here is a three dimensional of different objects scanned by the, by the scanners. And the reconstruction approach has used also, also in robotics. For example, a gripper mounted on a robotic arm can be reconstructed. And here are some results from multiple scans using multi view filtration and and ICP with different configurations. And this reconstructed gripper can be converted into a, into a volumetric representation used for collision calculations and robotic simulations. For example, in the robotic op operat operating system, the volumetric hierarchical representation called Octomap is used. There's basically an octree composed of volumetric elements. And we've seen some reconstruction using, using scanners. And I would like to show results from, from the camera. Having the real-time input from, from the camera, we would like to perform the reconstruction in real-time. So this is called fusion. And basically, for, for input, input point cloud, the point cloud is projected into a volumetric structure um, that is represented by TSDF, that stands for truncated sign distance function, and it describes the distance from the surface of the objects. During the fusion loop, first the initialization is performed. So the first frame is projected into the volumetric structure. And so basically, the volumetric grid is aligned with the camera space. And then in the loop, the TSDF, TSDF is project it is recast it from the last camera position. And the next input frame 
is aligned with this projected, projected point cloud. S using the ICP, these two point clouds are registered, and the transfer measure is used to transform the input point cloud. And the transfer point cloud is recasted and, and projected back to the TSDF, and TS TSDF is updated. And this is repeated in a loop for, for all the frames. Here we can see a fusion process using robotic arm and a complex scene that is rotating on a table. And you can see the fusion is performed in real time. And after the fusion is completed, we can extract the mesh from the TSDF. So let's conclude this part. And <clears throat> we've te tested mesh learning based methods for tasks like field telling classification, six deep estimation. And the robustness of the analytical approaches can be increased using data driven methods. But for this, we need training da data because the missing training data is the biggest obstacle in, in free division, in machine learning based free division. So, therefore, a synthetic data can be used for training. However, there are still some differences in the real and rendered data, and therefore, the trained models don't have the desired precision. However, the hybrid methodology can can, can, can help here because we can we can use the hybrid methodology to to get the higher higher precision of the solution. So let's conclude the presentation with some ideas for for future research. A set of methods that that we presented here can emerge into a full stack solution for logistics on or warehouses. And the Brightwick is a company company delivering this full stack full, full stack out, full stack automatic solutions. Parts of the solutions is the segmentation, six deep estimation, and it's merged into a complex, complex system. Here you can see a demo showcase of a robotic arm picking some objects, and another robot handling the object and storing, storing them in the, in the storage. And for such a complex system, a new problem optimization pops up, like the idea how to, how to optimize such a complex system. In once. And if we extend the idea of, of this virtual data into full stack simulation of the system, we can optimize the system. And for this, the NVIDIA Omniverse can be used where we can, we can like render synthetic data, we can optimize the parameters in the whole, whole virtual system. Here you can see an, see an example of footage from, from Amazon Warehouse where a real, a real warehouse and a rendered simulation is performed, and this can be used to render the virtual data and to optimize, optimize the system, the train the neural networks, optimize the, the robots. And we can use, using the simulation, we can define some, some metrics, and these metrics can be evaluated and the parameters can, can be tweaked. And we can restart the simulation and do the same in a loop. So basically, we can, we can optimize the whole process composed of hundreds of new networks and robotic subsystems. So to conclude the future, future research section, a more realistic data sets are needed. We can use for this a noise transfer from the real scans using some neurotransfer, or a physical based simulation of a 3D scanner can be performed in order to get better training data. There is an example of patterns projected to a, to a virtual, virtual scan. So to sum up the habilitation presentation and to compile some take-home message from this. So first of all, um, a real-time and accurate free division is needed. Next, the, the analytical algorithms are not robust in general for free division. And we can use data-driven methods that pro provide lower precision. However, the hybrid methodology can be the solution for this. And the last thing is that we need more training data in free division. We are missing training data, and we can use synthetically rendered data to train these data-driven methods. So finally, I would like to acknowledge my colleagues from Skeletex Research that stands by me and my research objectives all time along. Adam, Messi, Stuchlo, Adjo, Lukáš. All of them are my ex-students, what I'm really proud of. And the second knowledge goes to colleagues from the Photoneo for their, their perspective, ideas, and long-term research and development collaboration. Thank you. 
I think we've got some time, time for questions. And...